Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today we're going to talk about the 2016 Gibson Les Paul Studio T. But before we get into that, I kind of have a humorous story about this one. So last year, about halfway through, I got a collection of guitars that the owner wanted me to document. You might remember him as the private build guy. Now, this guitar accidentally got stuck in with all of his instruments, and I completely forgot about it. And it wasn't until Robert Baker came over for that Trade Tuesday series, and he played all the guitars that I currently had, that I was like, oh, I forgot I even had that guitar. <laughs> So yeah, apparently I bought this one at the end of April last year, and it's taken me, what, almost eight months now to document it. So, a 2016 Les Paul Studio T. How is this thing significant as far as Gibson history goes? Well, this was the first model coming off the line that kind of had traditional specs. 2015, it was a really strange year for Gibson because they gave them all these zero fret nuts. They gave them a wider neck profile. They had automatic robot tuners. Some people like that stuff. Most people don't. It's kind of a matter of preference. But this was the year when it kind of went back to tradition. So we've got, once again, manual tuners here. It's been restored to the regular neck width. And you have a traditional nut back on here. So it's just a regular Les Paul Studio, but with a few modernized appointments, such as modern weight relief, as well as coil splits on a push-pull knob for your volumes. And these things came in a plethora of colors, anywhere from ebony to Pelham blue to silver pearl, all the way down to your wine reds. And there were also some satin finishes available. But a good thing to know spec-wise about these guys is if you get a white one, they actually have a Granadillo fretboard instead of rosewood. So we're almost out of that era where they were using kind of funky woods for the fretboard due to the whole sights restriction on rosewood. And I get asked quite often, hey Trogly, is a studio any good or should I pay more money and get a standard? Yes, they're definitely still great guitars. They're less money, but they're still all Paul. Well, that means you don't have binding along the body, you don't have binding along the neck, which some people prefer. You don't have binding on the headstock. You don't have any mother of pearl or fancy logos or anything on the headstock either. A lot of people don't even realize studios are an eighth of an inch slimmer than a Les Paul standard. And they typically use lower grade woods. That doesn't mean you won't find a few nice looking ones though. You just might find that your body's three pieces versus a standard having two. But they do still have similar or the same hardware and pickups as the higher end stuff. Like this series, same pickups as a Les Paul Custom. Most of them anyways. And pretty much the same hardware as you'll find on a standard from this year. That's kind of how these things have been since the introduction in 1983. Now the first two years the studios actually have alder bodies. But since 1985 and onwards, the body woods have been the same as well. So they are a fantastic value. My favorite era for studios are the early 90s ones because you still have ebony fretboards on those guys. But a thousand bucks should buy you pretty much any used studio. The only thing I would not suggest is buying a brand new studio. I cannot wrap my head around a $1,500 studio. Unless you're one of those guys that has to have everything new. You don't like somebody else owning that guitar at one point in time. Because with a budget of $1,500, you can literally buy any Les Paul studio that was ever made. We're talking you can even get the premium plus tops. Except for maybe a few of the studio customs or standards from the early 80s. So it really is hard to beat a Les Paul studio if you just need a Les Paul on a budget. So let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench to learn a little bit more about its individual parts and specs. Inside this Studio 2016, we have the 490 series pickups, 490R in the neck and 498T in the bridge. That's the same set of pickups you're going to find in a Les Paul Custom. Most of them. It's always hard doing generalizations because there's so many different models out there. The neck position reads 7.71k ohms, the bridge is about twice as hot, 13.56, and in the middle, just for fun here, about 5. Another cool little feature about having a modern studio is a lot of them have these coil splits on them. But here's our pickup routes here, they actually look pretty clean for a Les Paul studio, I mean that's really clean for a Gibson, they must have put a lot of pride into this one. But FI stands for Fireburst, and then our bridge pickup, I believe Les Paul studio. Something like that, that'd be my best guess. But here's a good shot that shows you it has a full width maple top. One small thing that I do want to mention about the pickups, it actually has a slight defect where it started to bend out. Sometimes that'll happen and this part will break off. You don't technically need it there, it's mainly just for cosmetics. But if you were to register this one under warranty, sometimes even out of warranty, Gibson would send you a replacement ring. 
Now that I'm looking at it, the neck pickup ring has a slight bow to it as well, so it might just be a flaw within these plastics or they were over tightened at one point in time. And also notice that this studio did not come with a pick guard stock from the factory. As far as the bridge setup this time, it looks like we just have the API branded bridge here. You can see the API right there. It's Advanced Plating Incorporated. And this is the version that you can adjust with an Allen key. And there is one of those in the case yet, so you're set on that. And the bridge is made by the same people. Fireburst is not my favorite finish in the world, but I think what saved this one for me is it's got a little bit of bird's eye to the top and some nice wood grain. So, I mean, it's got some natural beauty to it as well that can kind of help me look past the color, but, you know, some people dig the Fireburst finish. It definitely wouldn't have been my first choice, though, but it is a two-piece center seam right there, joined on top of a mahogany body with a mahogany neck and a rosewood fretboard. Something that's kind of a plus about getting a Gibson with a rosewood fretboard that doesn't have binding is there's less opportunities for them to mess up and chew up the sides of your fretboard. But this is a 22 fretted neck with a 24 and 3 quarters inch scale. As far as the rest of the neck specs, we get 1.7 inch nut width. That increases to 2.09 at the 12th. With a 0.83 first fret neck depth, that stays fairly consistent, 0.88 by the 12th. That's impressive. So it has a nice round profile, but it stays relatively thin. Moving on to the face, you have a studio truss rod cover, and underneath there sleeps your truss rod should you need to adjust it. And nothing fancy up here, just a Les Paul silk screen with a Gibson silk screen. Moving on to the back here, I don't think anybody's surprised to see a PCB system within here. It just makes it easier to install these things. So you got a push-pull pot on these two, and then just regular pots on your tone controls. And this version uses the white connectors if you wanted to put some different pickups in here. And you can install other pickups in here too. All you gotta do is snip off the ends of these and then solder them to your other pickups. But these 2016s have the built-in shielding to the back plates. Now there's actually an issue with these things, and it's called static electricity. Sometimes on this era of Gibson, you'll actually get static within the finish. Luckily, this one does not have that, but there are a lot of them that do. And then the other thing that you can sometimes find is when you have these on here, whenever you brush against this plate or the screws, you'll get a light crackle sound through your amp. It's nothing huge, it's just enough to annoy you. Thankfully, this one, it's not too bad, but I'm not gonna tell you it's not there at all because it is a little bit. Some of these, you'll get a quite audible pop when you touch it. This one, it's very slight. And some of them will even do the crackly sound even if you do this. So this one, I wouldn't really call this one an issues example, but just so you guys know, there are some problem examples out there. And it seems the way that you're supposed to cure this is you're supposed to add little grounding tabs, like right over the screws. That way everything is completely grounded off. But this one has been left factory original. And the only other defect I found on this one is there is a seam line running up and down here that is more visible than I would like it to be. Now, I believe if you take this to a guy, I believe it's called like a French polish or something, they'll add a little bit of lacquer, they can make that completely disappear. But that is sometimes a defect that you'll find on these guitars. It's not splitting and coming apart or anything, it's just a seam line. I believe this one is a three-piece body. You can obviously see that one. And then in the light, just right, you can see another one kind of along there. Along the edge here, you have the black jack plate with the large strap buttons. They're meant to kind of be a one size fits all strap lock. Not quite as good as a strap lock, but they're pretty good as far as keeping your strap on. Moving up the back of the neck, the thing I hate about black finishes is that they show fingerprints so much. So when you're done playing this thing, there's definitely fingerprints everywhere. And the back here, you can see it is a 2016 model made in USA with your serial number up here. Within this year, it's the first two digits that tell you the year. The rest is just a production number. And we have our Gibson Cluson Deluxe style tuners. This is from the era where they put slightly thicker fretboards on the guitars too. And this particular one weighs 8 pounds, 3.3 ounces. It is weight relieved in the modern style, so that's the one that has the V-shape in it with a few other holes. But let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds. <laughs>
that we know all about this Les Paul Studio, what are my final thoughts on it? It's a good guitar. I mean, it's nothing fantastic to write home about. I'm not a big lover of this finish, but perhaps you are. The only thing I really like about this one is kind of what I told you before, the slight bird's eye and flame that you got in this top. That's what personally makes this one for me. Tone wise, I personally really like the bridge pickup in both the clean and dirty settings, but I found a lot of these tones getting rather muddy, at least with my amp settings, so maybe it's user error. But you do have the humbucker and split coil sounds going for you, so it is a versatile guitar. Oh, if you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Les Paul Studio, let's go ahead and go over its condition. This one was sold to me as something that had not been played a lot, and I will say, yeah, the condition definitely says that. Got a little bit of scratches from string changes up here on the face of the headstock. I wrapped those tuners around properly. I tightened them up as well. I put some graphite in the nut and I polished the frets and made the fretboard conditioned. I do notice a little bit of fret sprout. I mean, it's not super massive, but it's definitely there. And I want you to know about it if you're super picky about it. I did not notice it while playing though. Going around the front here, you can see some light picking scratches. Not too much wear, but this finish definitely shows all the fingerprints and stuff that is on the guitar. Your tone pots and everything work the way they're designed to. And again, you do have those slightly beveled out pickup rings. I don't think it's ever gonna cause you any issues, but it might cause you issues if you're a uh, OCD type guy. It's like, oh, I don't want those bending out. So you might consider replacing those. It's relatively cheap to do. Backside of the headstock, just some light fingerprints and light edge wear. I didn't see anything too crazy here and no major marks on the neck besides my handprints here. <laughs> That's why I hate black finished guitars. It just shows everything. And as far as the back goes, it's just that seam line. There we can kind of see it. It's really hard to photograph this. I was trying my best, but that just hides in photos. Other than that, I'm really upset. My scale accidentally scratched this guitar up back here. So those are some pretty deep scuff lines. I mean, you might be able to do a super heavy polish type thing to get those out, but hey, that's just a good excuse for you to wear a nice big belt buckle with this one. <laughs> I think I'll have to get a new scale now. Cause that happened on my scale because there's like this little part that got cut. So there's a rough part. So that kind of scratched against the finish. So I'll either have to get a new scale or put something over top of that because at least it only happened on a studio. I mean, this is going to be a pretty good deal for somebody who just wants a nice little player and you can live with that seam line on the back and a few light scratches. Under black light, we have just a little bit of glowing going on here. Nothing too crazy, but it's a fairly new guitar. It's what, 2020 today? So wow, this guitar is actually four years old. That's crazy. But I do not see any breaks, cracks or repairs here and everything's looking good. So definitely passes the black light test. This one comes in an error correct Gibson USA hard shell case, most likely the original one, but there's really no good way to prove a case is the original, original one. So we've got five latches on here, functioning handle, and the interior is red. So that tells you it's a more modern version of this case. Good heel support, double neck rest, all your case candy and stuff is in here. That includes things like your silica packet, Got your truss rod adjustment as well as an Allen wrench in there. Got your owner's manual and your warranty information that was never filled out. So you might be able to fill that out and send it in and be technically be the first owner. I'm not sure how that works. You might get lucky though. <laughs> then get them to fix all that stuff under warranty, but no promises on that. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Gibson Les Paul Studio from 2016 in Fireburst Finish, you can check out that link in the description, which will take you to the Reverb for Sale page. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. <laughs>